So this is going to be a little bit of a different kind of video because we have already had our fair share of conversations about this player. Today, we are talking about the projected first overall pick in the 2024 NHL entry draft, Macklin Celebrini of the BU Terriers in the NCAA. Now, if you wanted the entire scoop as to what makes him a good player and why he is able to find success and the profile and the scouting report and everything, the Why I Want video from two months ago earlier this year does go out there and spell everything right there for you. So the video is available. It exists. Go out there and check it out if you want to see the scoop on the projected first overall pick. But this video is going to go over a different angle of the Celebrini conversation, one that isn't necessarily about, oh, a scouting report, the intricacies, what other scouts have had to say about him, etc., etc. This is going to be more about the hockey conversation surrounding Celebrini rather than Celebrini himself. Because I'll open this video up by saying that I think... The common idea when it comes to Celebrini and a lot of these prospects in the 2024 draft is negligence? I don't know, man. Like, the weird part is, I think, when it comes to my perception of being a hockey fan who has paid attention to the league and the conversations about the league, and especially my favorite teams, the Wings, the Canadians, the Canucks, they're all bad teams for the past few years. Like, it was just a few years ago that these teams were all last or near last in the NHL draft lottery, and they were drafting top five consistently, so I've been paying attention for a while. And what I've sort of noticed is, in the years of like 2018, 2019, 2020, this is when draft conversation was maybe at its peak, especially here on YouTube and elsewhere on social media. Everybody was talking about Jack Hughes. Everybody was talking about Rasmus Dahlin. Everybody was talking about Alexi Lafreniere. That 2020 season was nuts because the draft got delayed until like October or whatever it was. Like we had to wait an extra summer before we were able to get the draft said and done. Everybody was just at home. We were all quarantined. We didn't go outside. Everybody was just talking about prospects the entire time. And that, I feel, is when prospect talk was more so at its peak. Everybody was micro-analyzing the details. Oh, how good is Lafreniere going to be? Is Byfield better? Raymond Stutzla, Marco Rossi, etc., etc. That was the discourse back then. But we're four years removed from that. We've gone through a few dud drafts where some of the guys at the top did not play as well as we expected them to. Sure, Jack Hughes became good after a while. Sure, Alexi Lafreniere, as we had talked about in the video earlier today, he's now good. But ever since that 2019, 2018-ish era, we've had a few duds at the top in the immediate short term. Owen Power didn't even play in the NHL to start out his draft plus one year. Shane Wright didn't even go first overall, Slavkovsky did, and he had some sort of a slow development path in the NHL too. People were calling him a bust as far back as like three months ago. So it was a big return to form, I feel, with the way Connor Bedard last season was lighting everything up, because Connor Bedard had himself this incredible, incredible stock that carried itself from two, three years ago, before the draft even began, up until the date that Chicago Blackhawks selected him first overall. And he came in to the NHL. He impressed. He's a point-per-game guy right now. 57 points in 60 games for Chicago. The team stinks. He's a minus 39. But whatever. Like, if you put Bedard on any other team, he'll probably do phenomenally well and best out the point production he's got in Chicago right now. He's, like, the only guy who's actually good. But when it comes to the guy who's projected to go first this year, Macklin Celebrini... I feel like the conversations that we had about first overall picks years ago, like the Darlene's, the Hughes's, the Lafreniere's, not the quality of those players, but the conversations we had about them and what we thought about them, I feel like that is more so what we should be thinking about when it comes to Macklin Celebrini. And to help us out, I wanted to go over to some Twitter posts made by some of the local Canucks reporters and prospect people. Cam Robinson went out there and tweeted this two weeks ago, pretty much. Macklin Celebrini, in 2024, is the very first 17-year-old ever to be nominated for the Hobie Baker Award. He would obviously be the youngest to ever win it if the votes go his way. 
And as we had talked about a few videos ago, the Hobie Baker Award was nominated for, you can choose who it is that you can vote for and everything. Macklin Celebrini is one of the many people that was nominated, but it's all for good reason because Macklin Celebrini had 64 points in 37 games played this year in the NCAA as a 17 year old. He also had eight points in five games for Team Canada at the World Juniors. He's also an underage player. So 17 years old the entire way through, he was out producing like crazy. And just in case anybody asks, yeah, he was able to go to the NCAA early because he had extended schooling in high school. He was able to graduate sooner and he was able to enter college sooner, which is why he is an underage player playing here and dominating. Here's the reply from Thomas Drance. I think that Connor Bedard fatigue after last year and the fact that the 2024 class isn't really deep with elite talent has caused the hockey world to underhype Macklin Celebrini. He's ridiculous. He's easily the second best prospect in the last five years, Cam Robinson goes out there and says. Now, Okay, second best prospect in the last five years. 2024 right now, so we'll include 2023, 2022, 2021, and 2020. If you think from 2020 up until 2024, that's five draft classes, the top picks from these classes include guys like Alexi Lafreniere, Byfield, Raymond Stutzla. You have Owen Power, Matty Beniers, McTavish, Luke Hughes, Kent Johnson, Slavkovsky, Nemich, Cooley, Wright, Cutter, Gauthier, and then, of course, Connor Bedard last year, alongside of everybody else, Leo Carlson, Adam Fantilli, Will Smith, David Reinbacher. Cam Robinson, who is the main guy for Elite Prospects, is saying he is the easy second-best player in the last five years. And, of course, number one, you could say it's Connor Bedard. A reply goes out there and asks, does that include the 2019 draft, or is that just below your cutoff on the statement? I'm just curious if you think that Celebrini is a better prospect than Jack Hughes. Cam says, so that five-year window was 2020 to 2024. Jack Hughes versus Macklin Celebrini is an interesting one. Mac is the most dominant force in speed, power, and defensive play. But Hughes is the far more crafty player and elite thinker. Now, pause before we continue here. There are some extra replies I wanted to read. When Jack Hughes was draft eligible, a lot of people were talking about this guy as if he was going to be maybe that next Connor McDavid-like name. Not because he was a generational player, but because of the way that Hughes is able to create offense. We say this all the time. We said this in the video a few hours ago. But part of what makes McKinnon, McDavid, and Jack Hughes all the more effective is because they dominate the game with their speed. When they take the puck on their stick and they get going, man, is it hard to stop those guys. McDavid can dangle the pants off of you, and he's the fastest player in the world with the puck on his stick. There are other players that are faster than he is without it, but with the puck, oh, no chance. McKinnon is a force of nature. He can drive by you with screaming power and ferocity. Jack Hughes can do the same, but with exquisite thinking and edge work. You know how the Hugheses can skate. They can all skate like crazy. So, with Jack Hughes, this is the biggest debate that I thought was interesting to bring up. Thomas Drance goes out there and says, Hey, the Jack Hughes debate is more interesting than I expected it would be when I saw Macklin Celebrini live. Macklin does 90% of the wild neutral zone puck carrying stuff that Hughes does. Actually, he's probably the closest stylistic comparison I can think of. But then he has the shot, the face-offs, and the overdeveloped two-way stuff too. Cam says, he reminds me a bit of McKinnon with the power game. Jack is more sublimely talented, but less of an all-around presence. Celebrini is basically a slam dunk to be a top-flight number one center. We'll just see if he'll be a true superstar or not. What about Mishkov versus Celebrini? Who do you take? Cam says, Celebrini. So that was an interesting conversation that I wanted to bring up here on the YouTube channel, because when it comes to the Celebrini talk, I'm just noticing this trend from... Everything that we seem to be discussing with prospects and teams and everything, like, part of that's my fault. Like, I feel like years ago, we put such an emphasis on the prospects and everything. Now it's just, oh, here's the why I want videos. Like, that's it. Nowadays, I feel like my content has sort of fallen into the trap that the rest of the hockey world online has fallen into, where it's like, yeah, we're talking mostly about news and prospects and not really so much about the draft guys anymore, especially since the draft now isn't really as deep or as interesting as it was a few years ago when you had Lafreniere and Byfield battling it out. You had the 2019 US NTDP team and they were so good and there were so many defensemen in 2018. That was the hype back then, but it's lost a little bit, I feel, over the past few years, but we should be really starting to 
see it back with Macklin Celebrini. And I hope this video goes out there and tries to inspire y'all into thinking about this guy more because he's just that gosh darn good. Thoughts in the comment section below about this entire video about Celebrini. I hope you enjoyed this video. Shout out to 99. And bye.